Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. I'm going to be attacking some ugly religious spirits that always think that when you are teaching about success and accomplishment they think it's not spiritual enough i thought we just came and we should be praying or i thought we should come and do this sooner or later your lack of paying attention will punish you to a point that you will backslide spiritually without knowing hallelujah when you become a father and you know that you cannot be praying from morning till night you have the fees of children to pay is that true you have responsibilities at that point you will know that one key does not open every door in the spirit it takes keys and opening up yourself to them may your children never look at you and say daddy what is what is the benefit of all of this christianity may people not look at you in the village and say you are you are an unbeliever i am a christian what is the difference see let me tell you something the kingdom of god is a reward system are you following me now the kingdom of god operates on a reward system so you are rewarded for complying with kingdom principles I made up my mind years ago that I was going to end some things in my life forever. And I knew that to do that, comfort will be out of the way. And this is my first encouragement for you this night. Take this unnecessary spirit of luxury and comfort. It's not bad. Pack it up and keep it. A day will come when you will be comfortable indeed not now the bible says the vision will speak at the end no vision speaks at the beginning it says it in the end it will speak hallelujah another deceitful approach to success is waiting for god to do everything have you seen people like that I know God will do it. I know my God will do it. Are you not the king of the heavens? You can do anything you want to do. You can bless whoever you want to bless. You can curse whoever you want to curse. Let me tell you straight to the point. If that is your philosophy, then your suffering has not yet begun. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. He said, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. If you do not take charge of your destiny, you may be very surprised. Hallelujah. I'm going to be talking about three aspects. Three levels of the cost. Number one. We will quickly look at the spiritual cost. The first cost. Is the spiritual cost. You want to live a life of extraordinary supernatural accomplishments. No matter who you are. The first price to pay. It's your spiritual life. The spiritual cost. Hallelujah. There are many of you right now. If I ask you, what are you doing towards your success? You say, I'm trying to look for money. I'm looking for capital. May God just bless me. Let me just get money and see what I will do. Or somebody is running somewhere and say, I'm just trying to look for a job. I'm trying to look for this. And we pay very little attention. If at all for some of us. Our spiritual lives. We wake up in the morning, 5.30, stand at, 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 at the junction outside and you see everybody waking up in the morning, hurrying, running from morning until night. Ask them what they are looking for. They tell you, I want to move forward. I want to make progress. I want to make meaning out of my life. But the Bible says, except the Lord builds the house. He said, the word there is not except the Lord build it for you. Except the Lord becomes the architect of the house it says they labor in vain 
and except the lord watches over a city said the watchman watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he give it to his beloved sleep hallelujah let's look at the scripture quickly second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 if you're there say amen verse 5 are you there verse 5 it says this is speaking about the king Uzziah listen please he said and he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and he said oh I thought it was projected he said as and as long as he sought God what happened God made him prosper is that in your Bible as long as he sought God what happened so his prosperity his accomplishments in life were directly tied to his passion genuine passion for God many of us do not have a passion for god we only love god because we have been told that he is mighty and if you come close to him maybe he will drive demons away from your life and then success will come quickly if you want to be blessed and to do much for god in this kingdom the first requirement is your spiritual life uzziah he sought God. He says, as long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Let's read on. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of God. Look at his accomplishments. Look at the mighty things that he did because God was with him. And the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him. Did you see that now? God did what? God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who dwelled in Gubal and in Milnim. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. Look at all the things that happened in his life because he sought God. Let's read on. And his name spread abroad. This is the fame many people are looking for. And his name, why? He sought God. He sought the health of his spiritual life first. He was not just seeking fame and power. In the Bible, everyone who truly sought God made a mark in this life. Listen to me. The first cost is your spiritual life. Let's finish up. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Nine. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. Look at these accomplishments. At the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. In the desert. He built towers in the desert. Do you know how the desert sand is? The desert sand is not solid. Whatever you build, if you are not careful, God, he said he built towers in a desert. Extraordinary accomplishments because he sought God. Hallelujah. And he dig many wells, for he had much cattle, both in Shephela and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and so on and so forth. Read verse 11. He said, Moreover, Uzziah had a host of fighting men. Who is this strange man that was just breaking records, smashing records again and again? Defying the things that had been done in his days. The Bible tells us his secret. He said he sought God. He sought God. Look at this kind of exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits. It doesn't just happen by magic. Let's finish up. We'll read to verse 15. 
who went out to war by bands according to the numbers of their reckonings by the hand of jael the scribe hallelujah and then let's read verse um, 14 and uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and slings to cast stones verse 15 and he made in jerusalem what engines the first person in the bible recorded to invent engines this guy broke through in several circles the bible says that he invented them invented by cunning men to be on the towers upon the bulwarks so that when they came to attack them they use engines to defend themselves extraordinary accomplishments because of the quality of his spiritual life he said to shoot arrows and great stones without listen he said and his name spread where notice the bible in the previous verse said his name spread abroad now see another dimension his name spread far abroad he said for he was marvelously helped the first time he was helped now he was marvelously helped until he was strong have you been paying attention have you been paying this spiritual price oh there is a spiritual price to pray for success and the beautiful thing is that at any point in your life you can start are you hearing what i'm saying so peradventure your spiritual life has not been an issue for you you just believe that somehow you can navigate yourself through life let me tell you right now hear the voice of the lord he said i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health to the proportion to which your soul prospereth we have neglected the spiritual prosperity of the soul our intimacy and our relationship there are many things that can distract us looking for money looking for success wanting connection wanting to go here and there wanting to go abroad germany italy dubai everybody wants to go let me tell you something if you pay attention to your spiritual life first you will be helped the holy ghost is called a helper and the bible says uzziah was marvelously helped he enjoyed a rich dimension of the holy spirit let me tell you when god backs you you must succeed it doesn't matter what the odds are say i take my spiritual life seriously the spiritual cost under the spiritual cost the first price you need to pay is revelation and wisdom everybody say revelation you want to accomplish much spiritually in this kingdom we're talking about your spiritual cost now revelation and wisdom paul prayed to the church especially in uh, uh, the, the the church in 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 in, in ephesus ephesians 1 from verse 17 down he said i pray to the god of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the heart of your understanding the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know revelation and wisdom what is wisdom wisdom is the ability to take the truth of god's word and put it into practical application to deliver results for you anything you claim to know that is not useful in your life is not advancing the kingdom is not improving the quality of your life dump it it's a waste of time wisdom is not just the right application of knowledge it's the ability to take the truth of god's word and offer solution to life's problems and the bible says daniel 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens daniel 12 he said and they that be wise shall do what shall shine as the brightness you want to be a star you want to rise above get wisdom get revelation understand how things work in the spirit when you understand the spiritual laws that are responsible for delivering certain results i promise you life will bow to you 
Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So pay the price. Let your spiritual growth be constructive. It's not just coming to church and learning all the nice spiritual languages. Go for revelation. This is what we seek to teach. Not revelation of stories, principles, keys, keys, keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you find the key to this door, you can open it. When you find the key to this door, you will open it. When you find the key to that door, you will open it. If you do not have the door, you can pretend the door is open. But sooner or later, life will demand you to go outside and it will be evident that you do not have the key. There are many people pretending to have found it rather than humbling themselves to say, no, look, let's take this thing. Can I tell you something? No matter how long, find it. He said the kingdom of God is like a man who is searching for a pearl. When he found it, he sold everything he had to buy that land. When you pay the price to get revelation, it will reward you. Please listen to me. Finance in the kingdom has spiritual laws. Health in the kingdom has spiritual laws. Victory over sickness and death and failure has spiritual laws. Success in life has spiritual laws. Favor has spiritual laws. They don't just happen. A good marriage is governed by spiritual laws. Hallelujah. Longevity in life is governed by spiritual laws. How many of these laws do you know? That is how you can measure the quality of your life. I want to ask you a very practical question. How many of these laws do you know? hallelujah very important revelation 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 when you love the lord with all your heart he will open you up to revelations first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for them that speak in tongues for them that love him when you love god he will open you up to secrets and brother when you find it you have found it forever when you truly love god and for as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper have you been seeking the lord in your quest for accomplishment have you been paying a, is god part of your success equation i love the lord with all my heart the bible says in first kings 3 verse 3 it says and solomon loved the lord solomon loved that's what that's that was the basis of everything that he did and solomon loved the lord Do you really love the Lord enough to seek him with all your heart? To seek to know his ways. And how do you know those who love the Lord? It's very clear. John 14, 21. So don't just say, I love the Lord. We are going to see it now. John 14, 21. Hallelujah. It says, he that keepeth my commands, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. So who is the one that loves God? Please listen. Who is it? Who is the one that loves God? He didn't say the one who claims, I love God. I love God. I love God. Uh -uh. If you truly love him, you will abide by his commands. He said, And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And I will do what? Manifest. Reveal myself. God is not revealing himself to everybody. There are certain people that attract him with their passion for him. This is a big secret. Let's look at verse 23 of the same verse. Same chapter, sorry. Jesus answered and said, if a man love me, he will do what? He will do what? So have you been keeping his words? If you have not been keeping his words, you do not love him. Period. If a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him 
and we will come to him are you seeing there and make our habitation our abode this is the secret of intimacy love for god the bible says the secret things of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants many people let me tell you the truth many people want to serve god but they don't love the lord they respect god though they are christians they are not doing but that passion for god they don't have it and then they wonder why god seems to make himself real to other people i've shown you the secret of intimacy if you truly love the lord you will attract him by creating the atmosphere that brings his presence love for god hallelujah let me share with you under revelation just three keys that will guide us we are still under the spiritual cost and under that we are still under revelation so love for god i've told you love for god is one key to intimacy the presence of god you can have power without loving god it's impossible to have the presence of God without loving him. No. Number two. Obedience. Obedience is very important. Everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience. Everything. Everything. Everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience. Just one scripture so that we put it under there. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you hallelujah he said you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 so obedience 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 doing the word faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said so love the key to the presence of god the key to deep secrets in the spirit obedience the key to committing god in anything you are doing the bible says you are only willing to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete he told cain cain was angry because abel's sacrifice was being received and his own was not being received he told cain he said if you do what your brother did will your sacrifice not be accepted so obedience anytime you want god to show up and to perform in your life make sure you obey his principles the last key that i'll talk about quickly under revelation is the law of tithing let me shock you very quickly tithing has nothing to do with money look at me tithing does not bring money the bible never tied tithing to money let me tell you what tithing does hallelujah sorry many people tithe because they want money wrong tithing as a principle and as a key in the kingdom has nothing to do with financial prosperity it is your giving that brings financial increase are you hearing me tithing opens the heavens see listen listen look at me there's no time we have to touch other aspects and i want us to pray please look at me the bible says god created many trees in the garden of eden is that true but god kept a tithe in that garden of eden i want to show you where tithing started from so long as that tithe was not touched the heavens were open god could come in the cool of the day is that true please answer me tithing is one of the spiritual laws that is responsible for open heavens so whatever you do under that open heavens will now prosper That's why tithing does not just affect finance alone health longevity different aspects of our lives the reason why we preachers only reduce tithes to money is simply because we want the money period the day man touched the tithe what happened the heavens were closed and they sent him out of the garden of eden look at how important tithing is to god so long as man did not touch the tithe he could enjoy any other three he touched the tithe 
God sent him out. So every many of us are operating under close heavens. You are giving but under close heavens. You are serving God but under close heavens. Let me tell you something. I don't care whatever you do. See, the devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. He operates on legal grounds. Principalities operate on legal grounds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means you can you don't pray them away. You don't pray them away. There are kingdom principles that keep them at bay. Please understand this. He said, In my name they shall cast out what? But he said they overcame them by it is in my name. Many of us have been praying, trying to cast away principalities in our lives no it is your obedience of kingdom principles that keep them far that means if you are not a tighter even god cannot stop the devourer it will take only the blood to speak for you are you hearing me please in the series that are coming i will teach you about the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood because the bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit he said these three are in agreement he said but in the earth realm there are three that three entities that can open any door in this realm the spirit the water that's the word of god and what the blood he said and these three agree anything they agree on that door must open hallelujah these are very deep spiritual principles there are many of you you have prayed and fasted about some things it didn't change that's to tell you that your spiritual approach may be wrong hallelujah let's continue tithing the heavens will open over you everybody say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be faithful i need my heavens open see when your heavens are open you will know you will know your heavens are open one time i was praying i think around chapel and the lord showed me a vision i looked up and i saw like two ancient gates they were closing and opening closing and opening i said lord what is the meaning of this and the lord told me this is the heavens opening and closing over people and this is the faithfulness of tithing please take this serious tithing does not bring money tithing opens the heavens when the heavens are open anything done under that open heavens will succeed you see why some of you have been giving you have been giving to the poor you have been giving to the needy things are not working because the heavens are closed the devourer just needs to look at your heavens and know whether he's permitted to come to your life or not. This is a powerful key that many, many ministries, there are many ministries who love God, great preachers, but they are living under closed heavens. So they don't know why members don't come. Have you seen people complain like that? Members come and go. Members do this and that. I will train people and then they will leave. Let me tell you something. Check it. If you are not careful, the heavens are open. The heavens are closed, sorry. When your heavens are open, you will see extraordinary things that you know only God can do. You can't negotiate this principle. God is not a politician. There's no back door. No shortcut. hallelujah so have you been faithful in tithing if you have not been faithful in tithing stop saying god is responsible for what you are in you have permitted the devourer there are many of us who are in business you don't tithe many of us god blesses us you don't tithe see if you do it out of force it's not by faith and whatever is not of faith is sin you just wasted your time it is a product of a revelation how can i eat the tithe of god here is my heart my mind make up your mind lord not touching your tight if you are faithful you will live in eden when you touch the tight you are sent out of eden when they sent man out of eden toiling and all kinds of things there are many of you truly it's not like god is not blessing you 
but it does not work the bible says and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper take this tithing thing serious the number one key you need to teach people about open heavens is tithing don't think this is a gimmick by preachers if you come and pay the tithe and the preacher eats the tithe it's god that will punish him but you do your part do not allow anybody's negligence to stop you so am i sure it's not that usher that will carry my money what is your business make up your mind buy envelopes many of us are owing god you say god let me touch this five thousand please this is an emergency i must respond to it immediately and the devourer is saying go ahead please go ahead the moment you take it <laughs> you are just convinced that because you took communion or they made cross with oil on your head the devourer goes and you just fall down and stand up and say thank you jesus the devourer is waiting for you the moment you come out the oppression continues i'm telling you kingdom principles supernatural accomplishment starts with an open heavens he said you will see the heavens open the moment the heavens are open angelic activities begin in your life when jacob saw the heavens open what happened angels started ascending and descending and jesus told nathaniel he said you are you are shouting because you have just seen these things he said you will see greater things what are the greater things you will see the heavens open and the angels every time angelic activities are scarce in your life check your heavens may be closed hallelujah number two prayer so revelation one and then prayer prayer you must pray you must pray it's one of the greatest spiritual investment now i've had preachers even on tv talk against prayer and they say pray 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 you pray you don't pray all you just need is the word 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 <laughs> listen let me tell you the honest and sincere truth the bible says we will not leave the ministry of tables i mean the ministry of uh, we will not concentrate on serving tables we'll focus on the ministry of the word and prayer hallelujah a prayerless christian is a powerless christian period whatever destroys your prayer life has killed your christian heritage it's a dangerous spiritual investment that you must make it will build your spirit you will build sensitivity the gifts of the spirit will find expression the anointing of the spirit will be at work in your life and the anointing itself is capital everybody say anointing is capital yes we only know naira and cobble and dollars and pounds to be capital anointing is big capital are you hearing me the anointing can open doors for you that nothing else will open anointing is great capital all men seek for thee that's what they told jesus why were they seeking for him because he had an anointing do you know that if you have an anointing the uncle you are trying to talk to that is neglecting you he needs something that the anointing upon your life can solve you concentrate and build that capital i have entered places today that if i was not anointed there is no way on earth at this level of life those doors would have opened impossible impossible hallelujah prayer let's look at the second cost spirit move over me spirit move over me intellectual cost everybody say intellectual cost say it intellectual cost so the first cost is your spiritual cost for supernatural accomplishment second cost is intellectual cost help us holy spirit isaiah 5 verse 13 everybody while you are opening i like you to shout knowledge is power knowledge. not not that school along high dogo say knowledge is power, knowledge is power. say it again knowledge is power, knowledge is power. hallelujah 
knowledge is truly power if you value knowledge and you value information you will do wonders in this earth realm please listen this is where i want everybody to give us our attention because i know for many of us the spiritual cost we are paying it very well but probably we are not paying the intellectual cost knowledge is power isaiah 5 verse 13 everyone read one to read therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with test why knowledge everybody say knowledge say information what you do not know can destroy you ignorance is not an excuse in this realm in the world of champions you don't give room for ignorance many of us are spiritually serious but we are mentally lazy we are not willing to pay the price preachers hear me emoji wake up many preachers are intellectually lazy and they wonder why they are not commanding results hallelujah sustainable success is guaranteed by quality access to information your access to quality information about any area of life that you are trusting God to be an ambassador whether business whether your job there are many people who may never be promoted till Jesus comes because they are praying in tongues they are paying spiritual prices but they are neglecting their intellectual price look at me see honesty is good but that's not the only thing that is required in delivering results competence is key and competence is a product of intellectual prowess are you listening to me many nigerians have dreams and visions there are many books dream big have a great vision that's wonderful but just having a dream or a vision may never bring it to pass you must re you must get the knowledge and the information it takes to push that vision from being a dream until it starts walking on two legs everybody say intellectual cost ignorance is very costly i told you very very costly he said i daniel understood by books this book of the law the bible says this book not this chase magazine not this pointless novel this book many of us do not invest in building our intellectual capacity somebody comes and say god is calling me i'm going to be a public speaker i saw it in a vision i saw myself wearing suit like pastor femi you may die and never enter that revelation if you are not ready you think we are going to bring you to come and present a paper for us when you don't you've not read any book on public speaking you don't know anybody hallelujah you're not opening up yourself to learn from people who have gone ahead of you you will never arrive there this is what will frustrate you more many christians are frustrated because they cannot understand why although they are praying although they love god they see that they are lazy intellectually go to the house of many believers you don't find anything somebody is walking in his job he's never read any book to improve him does not understand anything about people's skills does not understand anything about leadership many pastors are governing churches all they know is how to pray in tongues and preach well they have no knowledge of corporate leadership they have no knowledge of corporate financing hallelujah principles of conflict resolution they do not know these things they don't care principles of church growth they don't care hallelujah praise the lord it's very important many of us do not pay the price to build ourselves intellectually you believe god is calling you to be a reality a tv show or a hostess or host or marriage and whatever and you sit down people ask you what do you know about marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman to be a husband and wife do 
Do you know? Listen. Listen. See. No matter how tongue talking you are. Are you hearing me? If I want to employ people and I see that you are going, your, your intellectual deficiency is a disadvantage to my corporation. Do you think I will employ you? Please answer me. So why are you angry with God? There are many people who are not interested. Listen, this is important. They are not interested in building themselves. They don't build capacity. How many books do you have in the area you believe God is sending you to? See, let me tell you. We live in a world where the basic knowledge you get from university is not enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen. There must be an added advantage. The difference between the five virgins who were wise was that they took extra oil. There are many people who go into business. They don't know anything about the business. They just hear somebody went to Dubai and went and brought containers. You too, you stand up. Carry everything you have home and abroad. They go and throw you away from the airport. Say you are going to Dubai. They seize all of your goods. Now you come back. God is not faithful. I'm a titan. No. No. Everybody say intellectual prowess. Psalms 45 verse 4. Can we look at it quickly? We're going to pray. Psalms 45 verse 4. God is doing something in this place. He said, listen, and in thy majesty, write prosperously because of what? Truth. Information. Write prosperously because of the truth that you know. Write prosperously. Bishop Oedeko said something that touched me in a very powerful way. He said, most restaurants, you can go abroad and see certain restaurants and they tell you this restaurant is 50 years old is that true this restaurant is 70 years old the owner has died yet the restaurant is still on in nigeria somebody opens a restaurant after two two years he has fought with everybody in that community till they close the restaurant and the person is a christian everybody say after me your intellect your mind must be transformed for you to accomplish supernaturally i tell you i i feel the fire of god in this place i must burn this enough buy books buy books not trainers buy books not revolve buy books not mary Kay. the books will buy you mary Kay. See, he said, buy the truth. Sell it not. There are certain things I do every day before I sleep. Every day. Some of you sleep from morning till night. You are just happy. Lazing around. You come and see people reading and you say, oh boy, you self now, wow, what are you reading? You keep distracting people. There is a name for those people. They are called enemies of progress. How many of us pay attention there are many of us visitation hopping from house to house hopping to people's office gossiping and discussing things that have no bearing to your future great men hear me are men who have learned to settle down and build their minds that you are a christian is no guarantee for you to allow yourself to be mentally lazy they give you a speech to prepare you didn't prepare for it you are not serious about it god has brought favor lack of intellectual preparation kill the favor out of your life hallelujah there are many of you oh god is calling me into decoration what do you know about decoration how many books show me the dvds you are watching about those who have who are champions in decoration and you come and just keep sleeping Dirty pieces of paper for people. Please give me a contract. I am a Christian. I am your member. So what? So what? Oh, I can make hair. Don't patronize that person. He's an unbeliever. Patronize me. The person patron. He said, plot me all back. You plot like this. Yet, you think that the person will just say, okay, you are a nice Christian. Are you contending to improve yourself? I improve myself every day. 
I'm not satisfied with where I am in every area of my life. Show me what you are doing to build your mind. Show me the investments you are making mentally. And I can tell you whether you will be part of the world changers or you will be part of the storytellers. Are you listening to me? Very important. Lay your hands on your head and say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to build my mind. I will buy books. I will buy DVDs. I will build myself in the area I've been called to function. I will be the best. I will not relent until I am the best. Say I will not relent. I refuse to be a local champion. I'm a global champion. Hallelujah. Yes. Make up your mind. Refuse to be a local champion. A brother is, is, is getting married and all he has home and abroad is 200,000. So they called you and gave you 10,000 for decoration. You just did every kind of ugly thing and they say, who did this? They say, you. They say, oh, well done. You just believe that another time you say, I'm carrying a proposal to Abuja. You carry your file and you're moving to go and disgrace yourself in Abuja. When you go there, you will see other people who have worked upon themselves. When you see their designs, you just stand there as if God failed you. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Believers, build yourself. Every day, there are four things I do on before I sleep. I must build myself spiritually. I must build myself corporately. I must build myself in leadership. What are you doing? What do you do with your 24 hours? Many of you early in the morning, they saw you in Samaru. Later on, you are in High Dogo. Later on, you are around and you just come and say, I'm, I'm, I had a busy day. Doing busy but doing nothing. Nothing. You went to go and gossip. Jakes, Kajikwa. You now run to another person. You did this. Stop it if you have been doing that. Great leaders are not like that. If somebody comes and is disturbing you, don't be afraid to tell the person, sorry, I'm doing some studies. I'm praying. Some of you are embarrassed. You don't want to be bad. Ah. Create a protocol around your life. Let nobody just jump in and out of your life because they think they want to see you. You are studying. At that point, illumination is coming. Somebody just bash it in. Avoid everything for the boys. Politely tell the person, I'm, I'm in a period, I'm birthing something that can take my family from where they are to Mount Ararat and take them to a place where they will be great. Do you not know, Samadhyam, he says, ideas rule the world. There are many of you, if only you pay attention, the truth is God tried for you. You are very intelligent. You are just not serious. You can't sit down and pay the price. And you know something listen the truth is if you really really want to be great god will open the way for you the reason is many of us do not want it bad enough that's why the way has not opened i don't care what it is you want if you desire it truly he said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart there is a level of passion when i want things i get them oh yes i get them I will pay any price to get it. For me, pain is not an issue. Hallelujah. When I travel and people who have gone ahead of me in any area of life are talking, I get a biro. I'm just listening to them. Ardently. Or I'm just typing on my phone. I'm listening to the wisdom they are bringing. While I'm listening, I'm reaching out to my pocket, finding any seat there to connect. You see, let me tell you, I, I taught this already in commanding results, the law of honor. Things do not just happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Things are made to happen. The truth is, whatever area it is you are trusting God to go to, there are people who are carriers of that grace. There are people who have that knowledge. You want to plot. You believe you want to start a saloon. Have you gone to somebody who has, who has a saloon and tell the person, see, I have 2,000 error. Can I give you this 2,000 error and be coming every day 
and be learning for one hour. I plead with you. See me? I started plotting somebody. This, all these people, this arrogance is what has kept a lot of people. Humility. If you do not humble yourself, you will never build your mind. Don't wait for people who have solution to come and meet you. Doctors don't look for sick people. They establish an institution called a hospital and the sick people look for them passionately. And even in the hospital, there are different kinds of words according to your desperation. There is a word called emergency word. When you really need help badly, they take you to that word. Life has emergency word. There are many people who you can get tired of your life that you say, no, I'm not going to any, I'm going to an emergency word. Build yourself. Build yourself. Oh, God wants to make me a pastor. And God showed me in a vision. I'm going to have 1,000 branches. My brother start getting, going for knowledge before you die early. The trouble of managing yourself is even killing you. And you want to manage 1,000 branches full of members. See, this is why God does not answer the prayer of a lot of people. They, they want crowd. They do not know the complexities that come with managing people. Every day there is a case somewhere. Somewhere. This is what was wearing Moses away. And his father Jethro in law. Um, uh, his father in law Jethro began to give him a key. On how to. He would have died for nothing. There are many men of God who are dying because they are doing everything. Everything because they do not understand the principle. Everybody say I receive grace. To build my mind. Jordan bookstore is there. You can start. Let me see how many of you believe that you are going to do business. Let me see your hands. Business people. Whether potentially or presently. What are you doing in that line of business? Keep your hands lifted so that I will. What are you doing? Are you doing anything? Or you are just coveting other people who have gone ahead and say, Hey, God, oh, this is lucky. Oh. Please drop your hands. Take it seriously. You want to do business behave like a businessman don't behave like a thief how many of you believe that god has called you into one form of leadership or the other whether corporately almost everybody should be lifting their hands you are either a father or a mother at least what are you doing to be no i'm serious what are you doing to build it i build myself every day I interact with the brightest of the brightest of the brightest I love everybody but I will not learn from everybody I want to shorten my journey as much as possible so I'm not ready for anybody to bring his mediocrity and make and punish me then after many years go for the best say go for the best tell your neighbor go for the best don't let loyalty and sympathy make you just camp around people you know your brother is good but the truth is he cannot sing very well you want to be a musician collect his own tape so that you won't feel angry but go and look for people who have earned the right to command authority in that field loyalty has stopped a lot of people from moving forward a man of god who is not a businessman doesn't know anything about business is organizing a business expose and preaching all kinds of messages that don't make sense he's a good man of god but a bad businessman and a lot of people carry all of those principles and life flogs them back love your pastor honor your pastor if he's not a businessman look for a businessman and listen to him hallelujah finally the third cost is the physical cost if you're angry with me that's a sign that God is working on you seriously you know I won't stop no way physical cost the third one it takes diligence and work not necessarily hard work but work to bring forth extraordinary accomplishments look at me everybody say laziness say one more time laziness 
for the last time laziness is not my portion in jesus name if you want to accomplish things supernaturally extraordinary accomplishments three things must suffer momentarily in your life number one your time number two your energy number three your resources the proof of love the clearest proof of love is the investment of time you must have time for anything you love or you consider serious enough how much time are you putting on ground how much energy energy everybody say energy see great people in life are workaholics are you hearing me they walk their life out until they enter that realm of greatness praise God I've been ministering in the last three weeks traveling ministering doing a lot of things but it does not stop me from doing the things I have to do hallelujah from this place I have another trip again traveling up and down yet you must give your energy everybody say energy some of you like sleep once it's 9 30 you're already nodding even if you are talking with somebody you just do like this and the next thing you are sleeping no no if you love sleep you will kill your, your future put your legs inside cold water and said my eyes you can sleep if you want to sleep but my life must move forward if you make that determination no devil in existence will stop you physical efforts there are some of us who are lazy you hate pain you hate anything discomforting you you hate embarrassment right now as i'm talking you're feeling embarrassed why are you embarrassing us see every great man in life is one who has been able to kill embarrassment where you open up your heart and say flog me just lash it let it come to build me many of us have lived in a place where everybody has lied to us either because you're a pretty lady or you are a handsome guy everything you do is right i tell you the truth if what you are doing is wrong i will tell you change proverbs 14 verse 23 we'll look at a few scriptures and we'll pray your destiny must move forward in the name of jesus proverbs 14 verse 23 let's read together one to read in all what in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips cheap talk there are many people that talk 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 but the bible says in all labor put your talk to work in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips tended to what Back your talk with tremendous efforts and tell yourself no matter what it will cost me say in the name of Jesus no matter what it will cost me I am prepared to pay the price to be the best in my field in the area God has called me I will be outstanding I will pay the price the price of time the price of energy the price of my resources some of you are on scholarship students a few of you god is blessing you fifty thousand or seventy five thousand or your five or ten thousand is coming every time you get it you are always running to the restaurant every time you get it boys it don't land you can't be great that way you can't be great that way so you create a momentary feeling of being successful why don't you pay the price and create the real one stop pretending like you are there when you are not there if your capacity has not reached for indomie take gary and use them I, I, are you following me now if your capacity has not reached for baked beans get the normal one shake off all those things from it and cook it giving thanks knowing that it will change there are too many people living fake lives fake lives 
you create an impression you do not have the resources to defend somebody comes you see my watch now you say i must buy this kind of watch you go and pack your whole finances and frustrate yourself and you are suffering alone and god will say so it when you buy it and that's frustration for you see let me tell you say after me there is time for everything say it be careful what you covet about people and don't put yourself under pressure. You don't need to prove a point to anybody. If you have only one trouser that has torn, sew it honorably and wear it. Let the people laugh very well so that when you become great, they won't, they won't say it's magic. They saw you. Some of you will charter a car from Samaru to Sabo. You say, I'm, I'm in a hurry. Hurry for what? 250 naira that you can buy a book you have not gotten to that level be patient the jeep will come nobody is arguing it but it won't come now pay the price sister you will buy the human hair for now use what is available use what is available don't carry 10,000 and spend it and you are just moving around fake lives use that that resource to build yourself Say amen. amen. If your own has not reached for Shagalinku, go to Zinc House. Go to Com Market. Go anywhere. Be honorable about it. There was a time it was Zinc House we used to go to. That was, that was our level. And let me tell you in all sincerity, even at that level, we were better than a lot of people. By that means, it's just that we decided to push our lives down because we knew there was there were higher jobs. There are many of you. If you get one million today, today you will buy a car of seven hundred thousand, a phone of one hundred and fifty thousand, and a suit of hundred thousand. That's all. And you just come and then give a testimony. Say the heavens open, and I'm here. My car is there. My suit is here. From that day, you start suffering. Nothing else about your life. Stop pretending it. You will get there one day. For now, invest in yourself. waste your time you think people are looking at you let me tell you they are not looking at you they have enough problems in their lives to face don't deceive yourself they are not looking at you at all they have serious issues about their own lives proverbs 10 verse 4 we're rounding up proverbs 10 verse 4 he become a poor that deals with what a slack a lazy a slothful hand he said but the hand of the diligent will do what the hand of the diligent will bless him and with that resource he will be able to do big things for the kingdom next scripture proverbs 12 verse 24 the hand of the diligent again God sees scriptures about hands about hands the hand of the diligent shall bear rule in other words shall lead the hand of the diligent will take him above he will take charge he will dominate he will break records he will set the pace but the slothful hand shall be made to pay a price shall be under tribute one last scripture proverbs 20 verse 4 Above all, the sluggard will not plow and what is his excuse there is cold therefore shall he do what therefore shall he do what now is the time to sow many people let me tell you thank god you are hearing this now because there are people who think you are wasting your time i promise you they will pray in tongues and still beg in the days to come it's not a false prophecy it's the truth about life many of the great people in this country are the classmates of some of our parents true or false where were our parents when they were paying the price and they get angry when they see them this is what happens to poor people when they don't pay the price 
and they see others that go ahead see every time you accomplish supernatural things you create an effect that agitates people because of the frustration you respond to critics not by replying by producing more results are you ready to take your life from where it is to the next dimension i've shown you how these are keys your eatery can be the best god didn't lie when he spoke to you are you hearing me your business can be the best your ministry can be the best your life that book can be a bestseller you just need to find out find out from those whose books have been bestsellers you wrote your book it was great but it was not a bestseller yet find out god has told you that he's putting the word of the lord in your mouth and you will be a prophet to the nations as it is nobody knows you go and get this spiritual capital of the anointing pay the price and i tell you if if i were a prophet if that god called me into the prophetic ministry i would have done things that would shock people many people are not ready to pay the price everything is available but there is a price tag on it if you can pay it carry it the best car in the world is still on sale if you have the money to pay you can go and order it nobody will stop you all the packages in life according to the measure of grace and your sacrifice and ability every time i stand before koinonia i don't see see let me tell you a time will come the people you see today will be the ushers in eni just the ushers because i know there is a world dying that cannot resist the solution we are bringing impossible our job is to contend for greater grace man Oh my God, I'm a success. Hallelujah. I have the capital of the anointing. I have the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God in me. And I will pay that price. Rise up on your feet. I bring you words of comfort. It will not always remain like this. Your life will change. Lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Mam prete kete bala da bos, ne kapra tofota la bataria da ba. Supernatural accomplishments, extraordinary accomplishments, like Uzziah. Ha prete kete kete, se prete kete bala da bos. Make sure you are praying. You are shining like the brightness of the firmament. You may start from Zaria, but I see you going far. Don't say I cannot get there. Walk by the principles. They will open you up to those gates. The nation will stand and give you an ovation. The nations will reward your sacrifice. <laughs> inspire yourself i cannot be a failure and david encouraged himself hallelujah very quickly we are going to pray three prayer points first is your spiritual life how many of you know the anointing is capital i've shared it with you now the anointing can make somebody come and sow a seed in your life that your your business for for 10 years cannot give i why are you neglecting it and one river came out of eden it parted itself into dimensions you are going to pray say lord i value your presence i value your anointing that anointing i take it like a capital Lift your voice and pray. Man, pray to kata 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 bash. Send the praise kalabash. Send the paka prosoto balaba. Hallelujah. The anointing. 
my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil power to heal the sick power to deliver the oppressed access in the spirit that will give me a seat among the great I refuse to be an ordinary preacher I'm full of the Holy Ghost walking in signs and wonders that will confound men I'm stepping into deep dimensions of power of grace I respect your anointing I respect your anointing oh God pray you need the capital of the anointing you need the capital of the Holy Ghost the greatest gift and the Bible says the gift of a man the gift of the Holy Ghost the gift of the anointing they told Jesus all men seek for thee all men seek for thee rich men seek for thee blessed people seek for you because of what you carry if you carry grace they will look for you if you carry power they will look for you if you carry unction they will look for you if you carry fire they will look for you they will invite you they will sow into your life they will bless you my spiritual life I receive your fire oh God it's not a waste it's a glorious investment that will separate you regardless of your lineage regardless of your barrier regardless of any factor there is a world dying out there they need the anointing they are willing to honor it they are willing to invest in it they are willing to reward it when you become anointed you will be above hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord during my birthday i was amazed at all the gifts that i got from people all around this nation and even from people outside of this nation many who have been blessed by the grace anointing is capital get this revelation when you pay the price if you get authentic grace there are hardly any families that invite me today that may not package something there are some of you right now you came here you left different places you package seeds some gifts in kind in cash you are waiting for the grace to sow years ago you were still alive but you did not come to me because there was no grace that means if i increase the grace a time will come i will start attracting a kind of people anointing is capital hear me he said because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows i hardly pay for things in my life right now i hardly pay for anything because everybody is scrounging to pay something for me that's what the anointing can do in your life stop struggling go for the anointing go for grace go for fire go for power and see the way it will raise you all other factors notwithstanding there are people who would never listen to me but they have been compelled by the power of his presence upon my life my age notwithstanding it has opened doors for me my age notwithstanding my level of exposure notwithstanding do you know that the anointing is capital it can end inferiority in your life when you have something men will come to drink of it he said gentiles will come to my life prayer point number two you're going to say lord i've been intellectually lazy i don't buy books i don't read but i repent this night and i begin to build myself 
I study by books. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I go for books. I go for tapes. I sit down with relevant materials along the area that I'm trusting life to break short for me. Shatatatatabaka. Koinonia pray. Koinonia pray. He said, then shall your life break forth. Then shall your life break forth. The power of information. If you know what to do, greatness is yours for the taking. If you know what to do. And Uzziah invented engines. Pray. My mind is blessed. I am not God. I study books. I buy exercise books. I study every day. I sit under mentors. I sit under men that carry the things I need. Whether in business, whether in leadership, there are men who have gone ahead already. Listen to them. Receive mentorship from them through books, through tapes. Prophesy to yourself, I'm an extraordinary leader. I'm an extraordinary entrepreneur. I'm an extraordinary business, businessman. I will shake this country with my ideas. I will shake this country. Go ahead and prophesy. I will do what has not been done before. I will create a new ways in the financial world, in the labor world, in the IT world, in the art world. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Last prayer point. Look at me. Last prayer point. You're going to pray and ask the Lord. You're going to say, Lord, give me such grace that I will not be afraid of pain and embarrassment. These two things. If you can conquer pain and you can conquer embarrassment, I salute you because you must be a world champion. Pain, embarrassment, these two things. If you are still conscious of pain, whether in the cold, whether in the rain, you will invest time, you will invest energy, you will invest resources. Lift your voice and pray. Let pain, oh God, not be an issue for your people. May they know no pain. May they know no pain. May they be men fearless, men strong, men of grace, men of audacity. Men of audacity who will pop their eyes, their hands in the eyes of the enemy. Men of faith, fearless, courageous, strong. Prophesy. Say, I can make it. I can make it. Yes. I can burn that idea. Are those who have survived much pain? Great men are those who have survived what ordinary men cannot survive. Great men are men who have endured. Great men are men who have tried and didn't stop. They fell, didn't stop. They were weak, didn't stop until they emerged as champions. Hallelujah. I speak a message of hope. Some of you are like Samson. Hear me. For whatever reason, your hair has been cut. Some, even your eyes have been plucked. And your family members are laughing at you to scorn. But I tell you something. When Samson stood near those pillars, his hair began to grow again. 
the bible says is there hope for a tree although it be cut short i bring you a word of hope if the devil hit you and he did not hit you from the root he only wasted his time because god will take that as a pruning and he will shoot you above and beyond hallelujah so get books get tapes get serious you know any of your friend that is not serious don't criticize them encourage them in love for many of you who satan is using your yesterday against you right now i silence the voice of that accuser of the brethren because the bible says that judgment has been declared upon him your mistakes of yesterday cannot follow you into your tomorrow there is a brand new day you can rise again you can glow again you are still that champion nothing is missing nothing is broken the miracle is not in what you have lost the miracle is in what you have left if you have ears to hear and two legs to walk again you will fall again you will become a mighty dream everybody remain standing all of this will happen only when your spiritual life is put in check and i know that there are many of us the lord brought you here tonight some of you have never truly made a decision for jesus you've had preachers again and again and again and again one of the secrets of our lives is that we are committed to turning many into righteousness daniel 12 verse 3 it says they that be wise shall be like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore it's an opportunity that you will become a star some of you have given your heart to the lord but honestly you have derailed from the part of the spirit and you have failed again and again and again and tonight you are hearing the word of the lord listen whether you are inside or outside there is love for you this is a place of hope are you hearing me the bible says there is hope for a tree you are that tree because the bible says you will be like a tree the lord is about to plant you tonight by rivers of living waters so that with any season you will still be fruitful i like you to leave your seat right now and come out here there are many people go ahead go ahead and take that step go ahead and take that step inside and outside don't wait for somebody else to come you are the first to come there are many people inside and outside appreciate them as they are coming lord i need you in my life lord i need keep coming don't let any devil stop you this is the beginning of a new season don't say everybody knows my face there's no time for that right now come and stand before his presence I can do nothing. I can do nothing without you. Without you, there's no life. There's in me. no life to. So I need you in my life. So oh, I need you in my life. In my life today. Jesus said, "Come unto me, all ye." that are weary and heavy laden the lord is still ministering to me that there are two people who are supposed to be here as i'm talking to you the holy ghost is telling you leave your seat and come out what are you afraid of there are two people the lord is showing me two people honestly speaking the lord is showing me two people two people leave your seat and come the holy ghost is ministering there is one more person left god cannot lie impossible god cannot lie hallelujah lift your hands those of you in front be proud of it this is not a mortuary don't come as if no it's so, if i give you a gift you will rejoice when you want to give people speech and price don't they come out you call them out this is the same thing god is giving you a gift 
hallelujah mean it from your heart don't recite it as a poem recitation does not bring new birth it's a sincere desire from your heart say after me lord jesus i have come to the end of myself and i love you with all my heart i know you are the only one who can help me and tonight i have heard your word take my destiny mold me make me a wonder i denounce sin and satan i declare old habits are gone bad habits are gone I am a new creation in Christ according to the truth of God's word I have eternal life in my spirit I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me grant me grace to live a victorious life my generation will hear my voice from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father look at these ones they are your children your sons and daughters they have come in response to your call lord let their conversion be authentic may they never go back to the things that they are coming out from right now i impart upon you grace in the mighty name of jesus christ from today you will be extraordinary and you will do mighty things for the kingdom in the name of jesus christ hallelujah Praise the Lord. Please look up. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. We'd like to follow you, Pastor Jakes. We'd like to meet with you personally and to talk with you and pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to follow the usher. He will have your details. The gentlemen waving their hands. Just turn back and follow them. They'll have your details. And when they have your details, they'll have a personal time with you and they'll discuss further and bless you. God bless you. Please follow them. Appreciate them, Koinonia hallelujah very quickly those who are worshiping with us for the first time now please i need you to understand this is not a ritual we call people out to recognize them to honor them and to bless them these three things to recognize them to honor them and to bless them so all the people who are coming if this is your first time of worshiping with us in koinonia i like you to leave your seat if you came with somebody and the person is not coming tell the person i want you to be blessed you must be blessed push the person forward god bless you appreciate all of them thank you for coming outside Pannonia, is this the best you can do thank you may god bless all those who invited them may god keep inviting your destiny help us to your life in the mighty name of jesus for those who leave your homes your offices and watch a lot of people and don't invite them grace for you in the name of jesus the bible says do the work of our